All right. Awesome. So thanks. I, thanks, Josh. I appreciate you reaching out to me. Um, you know, just in case anybody doesn't know, I real quick, uh, Josh reached out to me on Facebook, wanted to run some uh, questions and uh, had some questions about wholesaling, things like that. So um, with that being said, tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're at with your journey. Uh, and then we can kind of dive into whatever questions you have. Oh yeah, man. Um, basically, I'm I'm pretty pretty much in the state of where you know I, I you know marketing you know um, getting contracts. Mm -hmm. I really don't run systems. Kind of do everything on my own as far as like um, skip tracing, um, pulling lists, okay. and different stuff like that um i just go all about it on my own man and um i pretty get pretty great lists and um and i'm doing pretty good with the calls probably don't reach out it reach as many people as most people because they are you know using dollars and systems and stuff like that yep. but um i just go at it bro and uh, it's just a grind game for me man more than anything so how are you pulling your list at the moment um, I'm going online, man. I either go to PropStream, get my list from there. You know, I, I make a niche okay. list off PropStream, or I go and get yep. a government list. I just go directly to county sites and, you know, city sites and stuff like that. Awesome. All court and, you're, and you're skip tracing them using um, similar software like uh, PropStream, and, or are you using somebody else, or how are you skip tracing? I them? skip trace True People Search. Through True, True People Search? Just True free? People, just free. That's it. Oh, man. wow. Okay. I see. I've never done that. I've always used a skip tracing service. Yeah, so. man. I mean, you can, but like I say, it, I'm not really trying to skip trace a lot because first of all, I don't even use a dialer. So I, I mean, I'm not calling so many numbers and so I don't have anyone helping me cold call. How many, it. how many, uh, leads are you, are you, is your list? Like, is it 500? Is it 200? Is it 20? Is it, how many thousand. people? How many lists are usually on my list? Yeah, like recently, man. Okay, the last list I just pulled. Well, I pulled the list this morning, in Alabama. That was probably like it wasn't much. It was probably like seventy people on that one. But um, I pulled one like two days before that, actually mm -hmm. in Michigan, and I say I got one hundred and seventy-two pages, and each page has about one hundred and fifty. So okay. you know, you do that math and. The, most and yeah. it was it was targeted yes definitely yeah it's targeted it's okay targeted. It's straight off the um it's a government list oh okay yes yeah, awesome. yeah so you with those government lists you're going to get um it, it's weird because the thing is is that i uh, it depends on where you get it if you get it from oak uh from wayne county you're going to get a lot of detroit properties that you're probably not even going to want to touch mm -hmm. okay um, so it just depends. What I would do is niche it down to the area and concentrate on the area as mm -hmm. well. That that way you're not calling, say, um, you know, based on the numbers that you just gave me. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's probably a, a couple thousand um, people mm -hmm. um, and you're not using a dialer, you're using a hand dialer. So mm -hmm. I would concentrate on on the decent areas, the the decent zip codes in the, either in detroit depends on where they are first separate them by county mm -hmm. okay they they then, did they, they they got them separated by county already so I, i'm gotcha that's there yeah okay and then i mean you can just do a in in excel you can do a filter and filter it filter ones out mm -hmm. as well so what i would do is is take um copy make three different files in in or how many ever counties there are and completely separate those into each county if you have enough for that. Mm -hmm. Then concentrate on Oakland, Macomb first. Those are the high ticket. Those are the most valued, but you're going to get the most amount of no's as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So keep in mind as wholesalers, first off, where are you from? Where, where are you doing this from? I'm in Florida. You're in Florida. What part? I'm in the Panhandle, Pensacola. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah. I, I hey, whether you do it virtually or whether you do it in person, I, honestly, I, everyone has their own strategies. I like to concentrate on the areas I know, so I only do it here where I'm driving distance away. Mm -hmm. But 
I, I could do it virtually too. So, um, you know, everyone's a little bit different. And so with that, what I would do is, like I said, separate it, Oakland County, Macomb County, um, you know, anything outside of Wayne County, you're going to get a, a, a little bit more desirable. Okay. Um, in the suburbs, but still be careful on those. You still have to grab good comps and things like that and know how to comp it very well. Yeah. Um, I would not go into trying to comp, just look at um, first separate them by the, the, the counties then, and, and put them, put each county in a separate file, mm -hmm. then separate them by each zip code. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then concentrate on, uh, we'll just kind of start at the higher end, just going down. If you're hand dialing, great. If you have some money to put into it, I'm honestly recommend doing it that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how much you have to spend. I don't want to, I, I, you know, I don't know your financial situation. Um, but usually a dialer, you're going to pay right about $120 a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it, it, it's totally worth it because you can, uh, you can actually get, uh, through a lot more leads that way. Okay. And, you know, get, get you set up. So mm -hmm. that way you, you get more talking to people. The more you talk to people, the more chance you're going to have a deal, the faster you're going to get a deal. Okay. If you're stuck on the phone with ring, 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 ring on that next one, ring, 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 voicemail. No, next one, ring, 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 ring. How much time did I waste? You yeah. know? So things, things like that, that's where a dialer comes in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it may, everybody looks at the cost and in the beginning I did too. So, um, but that is one thing that's a hundred percent worth it if you're doing cold calling. So I always recommend that. Yeah. Let me, um, cause yep. you said one thing you said was, um, you'll get a lot of places that you don't want to be. Um, yes. Why wouldn't I want to be in some place? Because I had talked with some some um, yep. investor already in Detroit, and mm -hmm. um, asked them. I was like, you know, what area to be in, what area to stay away from, and they was like, man, everywhere in Detroit is good to buy, you know. So I don't yeah. you know. So so they say that until you bring them a deal where they don't want to buy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So all all investors will say that. All buyers will say that until you bring them a deal they don't want to buy. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is for instance. ARVs that are very low, okay, make sure the investor has a, uh, his strategy is a buy and hold. And even mm -hmm. then in, in Detroit, they need at least a 20% return, mm -hmm. 18 to 20% return on their money for a cash on cash return. Okay. Um, they, if it's a fire burnt house, unless it's in a, if it's a, if it's in a neighborhood where ARVs are only like 40 grand, 50 grand, 60 grand, a fire burnt house ain't, it's not going to go anywhere mm -hmm. because they're going to have to put 60 grand into it. Okay. In and order to get it, yeah. you're already at the ARV mm -hmm. and who knows, there might be more, you know, it depends on the situation, even mm -hmm. if it is brick. Also inside Detroit. Okay. Inside the Detroit city limits, brick is king. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is brick sells anything that's frame discounted heavily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even if it has a great ROI, you got to discount it heavily. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, whatever the ARV prices are, I would say, you could go at like 25%. Okay. But that's not a hard stop. Uh, that's not a hard number. Keep that in mind. Every area is a little bit different. You go to East English village mm -hmm. or you go to Boston Edison. I mean, yeah, you're going to be having, you're going to have to offer them like in the hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Like it, it's crazy, but you go just outside of that and the price dramatically falls. Yeah. Okay. So there is a little bit for being adjacent to it. There's a, a, a little bit of value, but not much. 
Mm -hmm. Have you ever, like, because from what I realized, man, like I said, I'm in Florida. I, I also do my backyard. You know, I'm not just yep. in so I'm also in my backyard. One thing I realized, yep. like, the repairs that people do in Michigan compared to the repairs, repairs people do in Florida are so mm -hmm. different. Like, in Florida, like, they they put a lot more into repairing their homes, like making it look a lot better than it seems like Detroit. Detroit investors get away with, it seems like a lot less of a rehab and able to still sell pretty good compared to Florida. It depends if they are fixing, flipping it or if they're holding it. Mm -hmm. If they're going to buy and hold it and it's inside Detroit, keep in mind, you got to look at the comps. Mm -hmm. If the comps are not updated that well, why would they update that house? Much, yeah. Okay, so you always look at the comps. Now, for a fix and flip, you always want to do it a little bit nicer so that it sells faster. So your my 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 buy and hold investor, the mm -hmm. rehab cost is going to be different from my fix and flip investor. Yeah. Okay. So keep that in mind, like a buy and hold investor. Oh yeah, I can, I can use those kitchen cabinets, the, the countertops, just paint, paint the cabinets and, and call it a day. Um, or maybe just change out the countertop and, and that's it. You know, refinish the flooring. I'm good to go, you know, five to 10 grand versus a flip. I, all that's got to come out, you know, I'm going to be spending, you know, 30 grand, you know, so. I always price things to price it for a fix and flip so that a buy and hold investor will still get a good value as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there are times that I push the limit a little bit between those two. Um, if the seller is giving me a hard time on price. And then what I do is I use this in my back pocket. I say, Hey, I understand, you know what, maybe I'm just not the buyer for you, but I've worked with a ton of other investors that maybe I can try to get your price. I, I can't guarantee it, but in order for me to uh, share it with them, I do, we do need to be under contract, you know, and what we'll do, what I'll do is I'll get some, you know, once I, I get a few people going through there, um, I'll get some feedback. We'll make sure we're at the right spot. I'm going to try to get you as much as possible. I, or I'll try to get you that number that you hit that you want. So we get under contract for the number she wants. Now, I the reason why I may do that is what I'm doing is I'm setting her up for a possible um, price reduction later on. Okay. Now, would I do that if we were 20, 30 grand difference? Hell no. This is only if we're like a five to 10 grand difference. Do you ever do a subject too? Why don't you just do a subject too at that time? So it, everyone, every situation is different. Mm -hmm. I always ask about creative financing because most of the people here in Detroit, they own them outright. There's no subject subject too. So I always ask, hey, you know what? Maybe we can do a little bit, uh, a little bit more if it's a, a land contract or a seller finance where you become the bank. Mm -hmm things like that. Um, now I always try it. Some people go for it and some people, I, Hey, I just need the cash for my other, for my next house, mm -hmm. you know? So for my next project, whatever the case may be. Definitely. So, Do you see a lot of development going on, you know, in the Michigan area, the Detroit, you know, um, it, de it depends on the area. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're inside Detroit and somebody says, oh, I have a lot I can sell you for 10 grand or this or that. No, a lot's worth a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. That's it. So in the city of Detroit, if you buy the house, you can buy the lot adjacent to your house for a hundred bucks. Mm. So from the city. You're only making bigger yards basically, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's why it's not, it's only worth it in certain neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And even those, they're not building new houses. Okay. Um, where you're going to find that, like Hazel Park, Ferndale, um, some of the higher end neighborhoods, Royal Oak, 
Uh, you, you find some land, uh, a plot of land in Royal Oak, that's gold. You know, but you also still got to make sure that somebody else can make money off of it after they build the property. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yep. So we were seeing some of that here. Um, but after, you know, once the interest rates started hiking and hiking, development stopped. Mm. So wow. not to say it won't later mm -hmm. on. It's just right now it's not going on. Mm -hmm. so. I remember you were saying with that, um, with the one deal that I was telling you about, um, I mm -hmm. actually started in the contract today. Why would you say that was too high of a price that, you know, that we were, that I was looking at? Uh, so remind me, let me look back and see what, what deal that was. Oh, Hall Street. Uh, what's that? Hall Street. H -O -L. All right, hold on. You emailed that to me, right? I didn't email it to you. I think I just told you the area in which it in, was in, that it was a, um, a property and also three adjacent lots with it and um and then i just gave you that um probably what i'll be looking for you know what area i'll be in with the asking and then you know you were just saying that it was a little bit different from what you and your partner usually go for yeah so um let me see the area again uh what was the uh, roundabout address was fine it's up in there it's uh, it's up in the uh up in my other room right now i don't okay. know I don't even have my other phone on me. So um, I, I want to say it's, man, I don't even want to guess it. It probably be totally wrong, but H-U-L-L -L Street, I know. And I think it's like 48002 or 48003 or something like that. I don't know, man. I, I might be saying it wrong. Maybe 40082 or 40083. I can't really remember right now. Okay. Yeah, but. So, because what I can do is I can literally. I can, if you want to run real quick and, and grab it, I can pull it up and yeah. I can, Look. I can run through my comps, what I would do. Yeah, it's um it's in this yeah, it's in the four eight two oh three area. Um one eight eight six one Hall Street. I think that's the that should be the um dwelling. Oh Hall. H U L L. Yeah, H U L L. In Detroit or Highland Park? Um it says it's Detroit. I think it's really Allen Park. Yeah, I, it was one eight eight six one. Yeah, H U L L. Okay, so this is in uh, it, yep, it's in Detroit, but it's so close to Highland Park. So Highland Park is a city within Detroit, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you look here, um. We can kind of see where this is at. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up Google Maps. Google. All right. All right. So this is like Highland Park. We're going to see where we're at. As it. There we go. So we are on just south of Sun Mile. Okay. Yes. So we're in this area right here. Okay. So this is Hawthorne Park. So where you would get your comps from is right in here. You do not want to get your comps outside of that area. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I got that part. Yep. So with that being said, what we'll do. So it looks like the let me do a street view. Okay, so this is this is mainly a frame house with a brick facade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not really a, a true brick house. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember I told you frame houses are less desirable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because this is a front brick facade, it's not, it's not a brick house. It's a frame house. So you price it accordingly. Okay. So with that being said, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this tab. And... We're going to go sold within the last three months. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Hawthorne Park here, this is... This is Hall Street right here. If you want to look at this is a brick house. It sold for sixty seven. This is a brick house. It sold for fifty eight. It looks like uh, it's ideal for home buyers, investors. Okay, so this was a little bit of a fixer upper, but you can see like it's going for twenty five at the moment. Okay. You got one for 24. This is a frame house. This is probably closer to what you have. And what'd you have? What'd you, what were you trying to get under contract for? Um, I really don't want to say the contract price on YouTube. No, that's fine. Uh, what were you trying to sell it for then? Um, trying to sell it for 65. 65. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's perfectly fine. You don't want to give out the contract price. I, I completely understand that. Yeah. Um, so, but you're trying to sell it for 65. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you can see one here sold for 24. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this is not, obviously it's not after repair value. How, well, how, how long ago that sold for 24? You say so it's like, it's within three months, right? It's within three months. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So this one sold within three months. You got one a little bit on the edge of the neighborhood here. This one is it sold for thirty nine. I actually know this property. Okay, mm -hmm. it sold for thirty nine thousand. It's actually in really decent shape. It's a mm -hmm. frame house. That's the max you could get out of that house. Mm -hmm. It was at, I. The reason I know this is because I gave the guy an offer of thirty grand, and mm -hmm. I was going to try to sell it for thirty five. Mm -hmm. he would not come down um on his price he wanted 40 so looks like somebody bought it for him for 39 mm -hmm. so i i know this property specifically <laughs> so what's, that what's the value of land in the area or do you know the value of land 100 bucks 100 bucks 100 bucks and that's only good to the person next door yeah that's it yeah so, um, again, I mean, this, if it was a full brick, like this is a full brick mm -hmm. house that 60, it sold for 67,000. Okay. And that was, um, repairs or was that before? Well, that's what it sold for. So I'm assuming it's after repairs. Okay. It looks like I'm going by the description here, ready, available, exterior, updated porch. So they, it looks like they did some updates to it. A hotel uh, yeah uh, either a hotel or um they they just freshen it up after a renter got out of there or something like that mm -hmm. um you know you never know uh, without me gaining access to the rest of the pictures okay yeah. um you know I, I don't really know that much mm -hmm. um, on that but like then this one here's one for 70. you're you're looking at so i think you're after repair value for that type of house, because it's a frame, you're looking at maybe 40 grand in this area because it's a frame house. Mm -hmm. If it was a brick house, then I would look at 
one of one of these two, and I'd be probably be closer to sixty to sixty five. So you see how I get that? Yeah, I understand. Awesome. I want to. Do you have prop stream? Because when I went on, uh, prop, yep. I seen some that sold like within the last three months. If they were selling, I seen some sold for like fifty five different stuff like that. But it may have been out of that area or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. So they that probably was out of that area. Um, let me do this here. Uh, so I have privy. Um, I I do have prop stream, but right now I I have it I let it lapse, so I don't have it available at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so on Privy, so we're looking here. This goes back a year, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you can see all the comps that it came up with, okay. So this one here, it sold. When did this sold? So this sold in seven twenty eight of twenty twenty two. So so uh, July twenty eighth of twenty twenty two, uh, that sold for seventy thousand. Mm -hmm. Now this is a completely different market than July. Mm -hmm. So you can't take that comp. No, I wouldn't go with before like maybe like October or November. You know, really. Right. So then you got one over here that is this is October that it closed in, and that sold for twenty three. Mm hmm. You know, so let me do. And yeah, that one's all the way over here. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of see you don't want to cross this freeway here. OK, mm -hmm. remember those boundaries that, that I told you about? OK, so um, seven mile, you don't want to go north of seven mile. You kind of want to stick right inside here. Mm -hmm. OK because it's the same neighborhood yeah okay so that's kind of where you know that's kind of how i would figure it sometimes my numbers are a lot lower than other people's but i have to get them lower in order for my investors to want to buy them and sell them as quick as possible mm -hmm. so does that make sense yeah it does awesome so there's a lot of people out there that what they do is they use older comps or they use these comps just outside of the neighborhood. And when you're in Detroit, you can't do that. You get more flexibility when you're in the suburbs. Okay. When you're in the suburbs, you can get a little bit more flexibility and go a little bit like a half mile out and so on and so forth, like your normal. Um, but Detroit is, it's a very special bird when you're comping. Mm -hmm. So I actually really like to use Google Maps. And what I do is I, I look at the neighborhood that it's in and I look at the outline and I'm like, okay, I cannot go outside that outline. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of the uh, tools that I use. Okay. Yep. Give me one second. All right. No problem. Yes. Just had to take the top off for dinner. So, <laughs> right. Anyways, sure, it's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of how I do copying in Detroit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, for instance, if I were to go in the suburbs, anything above eight mile here, going to Hazel Park, you know, you look into Hazel Park, and you got a pretty well lit area in Hazel Park. Mm -hmm. As long as you're in Hazel Park, um, with this. The, you don't, for instance, Hazel Park and any of the suburbs, you don't, like if you have a property south of Nine Mile, mm -hmm. 
you don't want to take a comp north of nine mile. Okay. You want to stay south because south of nine mile is a little bit different than south of nine mile and north of eight mile. You're going to get um, very different. It, it's it, the closer you are to Detroit, the worse off it gets. Yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, I mean, if that makes sense at all, um, you know, that that's kind of how you how you would go about that um, for suburbs like just across uh, just on the borderline of, of, of Detroit. Mm -hmm. So um, like, for instance, I had one property that was over here in this area where as soon as you cross Maras, it it's in it's a Harper Woods neighborhood. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, this whole area, basically this whole area, I would stay away from, honestly, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, unless you get it dirt, dirt cheap. Okay. And they're in good condition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I gave a, uh, one guy, a estimate that they had, he had probably about four properties right here. And I told him, I was like, if they're in good condition, rent ready. Basically, I probably only can sell them for like 35 if they're yep. brick. Wow. If they're brick. So it's this side of 94 depends on what whether it is. This side of 94 here, it's a lot lower cost than this side of 94. You go, you go this side of 94, now you got Cornerstone Village, you got Morningside, you got uh, Gross Point. Um, and yeah, so this is Morningside. You got, uh, Island View as well, I believe, uh, that is all over here. So there's Jefferson Chalmers, uh, East Village, uh, East English Village. Um, you know, every one of these has its own little unique things you, you gotta stay, stay around, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's where you, it literally goes block by block and you yeah. got to look at the comps. So, yeah. I heard that. They definitely say, you know, one block can be different from the next. Yep. This is um, what's more desirable is the West side. Okay. So mm -hmm. what, what do they consider West and East? Basically West and East is parallel to Woodward. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Woodward is this street right here going mm -hmm. all the way downtown. So east of that, a little bit, a lot less desirable. West of that is a little bit more desirable. Mm -hmm. But you, but when you're west of that, you kind of want to go north of the 96 area. South of 96, it's not that great of an area either. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um but then you get down here and this is like a uh, Southwest Detroit area where you got some good pockets. Mm -hmm. So just remember looking at the neighborhoods. Okay. Not the whole zip code. Look at the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So, um, any, anything else? No, man, that's pretty good, bro. I appreciate it, man. You know, great knowledge about the area, you know, being in Detroit and everything like that. Uh, yeah. how, how, how long have you been doing wholesale? So I've been doing wholesaling for about a little bit over two years now. Um, mm -hmm. And I would probably say about two and a half years or so. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I started with just uh, joint venturing with uh, other wholesalers as well. And I learned by doing, you know, so, mm -hmm. um, I learned the whole process and every deal that I do, I learned something new, you know, because something mm -hmm. comes up in title, we have to overturn it. We have to overcome it, you know, do whatever we can. So then yeah. on the next one, I learn to ask those questions as I go, mm -hmm. you know, um, and things like that. How many deals do you think you've done over the time? Did you keep count of it? Uh, I haven't kept 
too much count. Um, mm -hmm. I've I've done probably over thirty deals. Mm -hmm. So I average, um, I average about one a month. So anywhere, be, I'd say between twenty four and thirty deals or so, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more. So yeah, that's great. Um, I I, I want to up that this year and as much as possible and try to help out as many people as I can. So that's another reason why I started the YouTube channel, mm -hmm. you know? Are you so, doing a YouTube channel to start coaching or are you just doing it? Uh, right now I'm just doing it. Um, eventually I may do the coaching, but you, you never know, you know? Um, my thing is, is this is the reason I'm doing these one-on-ones is to add value for content and Kind of, you know, a lot of people charge for this, and uh, for me, I I'd rather get the content right now and just help out as many people as I can. Yeah, that's cool, man. You know, um, you know, uh, will that change in the future? You never know. Um, but I'm I'm an open book, and I tell everybody that I can. Uh, I'm happy to help as much as possible. Um, now I actually have a day job, and I do this on the side. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I don't do this full time and I mean, like I said, I'm an open book, but I treat it like a full time job. Yeah, that's great. Bro. So um, I think do for you, you, do you have a goal to start working? Um, when I own my own rentals enough to cover. Uh, I would say 125 percent of my income. Okay. Because one hundred twenty five percent, because I got to pay medical, mm -hmm. I got to pay you know all of that stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, but I like my job too. So, either way, what do you um, do? I, I'm an electrical technician. Uh, oh. I work in the automotive industry. Oh, okay. So, um, but you know, with that, I mean, do you do this full time? Yeah, I do this full time. Okay, awesome. And I mean, are you jumping around to different markets trying to see what what works? What you know? Where um, you be? Yeah, you could say that. You could say that. I'm just trying out different markets, not trying to see what works, but just seeing yeah. what you know how they all hit a, a little bit. You know, you could say what works as far as like which markets are harder than the others. Yeah, I'm also yeah. paying attention to that, but yeah. that's not really what I'm bouncing around for. I'm I'm really moving around because I want to have my hand in multiple markets i never plan on getting in the market and actually just leaving it i get into yeah. a market and just like i'm adding that market to what i do you know i'm going yeah. to continue to pull a list from that market now so that I'm market. so on that with you starting out so what i, I would I, i'm not just starting i've been doing this for i've been doing this for a minute i just started in michigan i've been you doing just started in, in michigan okay yeah i've been doing gotcha. this in the backyard yeah Gotcha. Okay. So how long you been doing this in your backyard? Like two years. No, probably years. not even two years. It's, it's not two years, probably like a year and a half. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So you, so you know, the process, you know, how, how it goes and everything. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, and I watch, so I watch Zach and Rick too a lot. You know, yeah. you ever watch them? Yeah. I haven't no. Okay. So. Yeah. I watch them a lot too. Okay. Um, I recommend, so there's an, um, Obviously, everybody knows who Pace Morby is, mm. you know, um, I, especially you brought up sub two. So I, I'm pretty sure you know who Pace Morby is. So mm -hmm. yeah. and then Jameel Daniels and um, uh, Brent Dan or sorry, Jam Jamil and Brent Daniels. Mm. Um, I actually how I learned how like how I grew as far as get my phone skills is I was actually listening to Brent Daniels cold call breakdown and I, I would just try to repeat it, you know? So, um, the more mistakes I made, great. There's always another next call. And yeah. I, I just try to work on it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's another good thing about having a dialer is that you can get the, co the calls are recorded. Mm hmm Okay, so you can go back and listen to them. Listen so to you, stuff. Oh, I yeah. know that sucks. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> if you eventually get a, a virtual assistant to yeah. cold call for you, you can always listen to their calls and coach them on what to do as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and what you use? What do you use as a dialer? What what are, what dialer? Yeah. So um, I use um, call tools. 
call tools. Okay. Yeah. So the good thing about call tools is it acts as a CRM as well as a dialer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and um, so I really, I really like it. I started off using smart smartphone with integrated with my Podio. Okay. The good thing I like about call tools is if I wanted to make a free Podio, I can, uh, if there's a lead that comes in, I can just uh, link it to my web forum and it automatically fill out the information that I put in there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and it's a little bit of a setup fee. A lot of times they waived it. Uh, they'll waive it. Um, I think I ended up paying for the first month, a hundred and yeah, 120 or 150 bucks or something like that. And then now I'm paying only a hundred bucks a month. Mm. Wow. So, and, but you do have to buy the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the numbers are only like two bucks. So yeah. it's not, not a big deal. It's so, two months, like that's a month or just a set fee. Uh, I believe it's just a set fee once you buy it. So, okay. and then um, like you get five numbers or if you buy five numbers, what you can do is, uh, you know, it will roll through each one of those numbers mm -hmm. so that not one number, like, obviously, it may get called spam, mm -hmm. but it checks it, okay? And then it once it, once it registers a spam, then it will uh, automatically take that number out of rotation. And yeah. And instead of using one number to constantly dial, it's rotating through all five numbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so keep that in mind. That's a really good one. Um, do you do I any like text it. blasting? I have, I have done it before. Um, I don't do it right now. Yeah. It didn't get much result. Uh, you, you do. Um, you just got to come up with a good system, a good text message. Make sure you follow the rules. Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of rules to it honestly wow. um so but you can integrate twilio i believe it is um mm -hmm. and you can do that but i would definitely look into a crm but don't like still do what you're doing now um what i would recommend for somebody involved like as involved you are right now you've been in it for a year and a half mm -hmm. i would look at getting a dialer getting a crm getting your systems that you process to okay. scale it to, to scale, scale everything it. yeah yep and duplicate okay. myself yeah exactly now once you get your 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 systems done then you can say hire a virtual assistant to do some of the things and take it off your plate yeah whether that be grabbing the list whether that be cold calling for you whether it be some of the mundane stuff that you know is just trivial mm -hmm. um, i would definitely recommend that yeah so yeah well, definitely, man. Well, I appreciate it, man, that you hear one of them calls coming in, man. So, you know, yep. no it. problem, man. I <laughs> hey, get at it, get some deals. And then, if you come across anything here in Detroit, let me know. I mean, I'm happy to JV with you. Yeah, um, definitely. Um, you know, if you want my opinion, I'm happy to give it to you as well. So, All right, man. Appreciate it, Randy. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. You have a good day. You too.